Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. For another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Thor Love and Thunder figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at King Valkyrie. Now I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new 1-6 scale Hot Toys MCU figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, for better or worse, it screams Thor Love and Thunder. We've got lightning absolutely everywhere, lens flares, gleaming effects on King Valkyrie's outfit, Gore's creepy little planet in the background, and a massive Thor Love and Thunder logo. On the side of the box we have her name, and this strip of lightning with some artwork in it. We've got the uh, goat boat sailing through the air and some trees at the bottom. And then around the back, warnings and legal info. I do like how they've used this streak of lightning down the middle to divide the two halves of the box, and because it's got this white core to it, it looks like it's just bleeding out over the edge from the left side. On the right, we've got Valkyrie's uh, logo of sorts. It is her tattoo on her forearm, but it's also present on the chest plate for her armor. Okay, now this is interesting. This is the first time I think I've ever seen this from Hot Toys. They've used these clear plastic sheets on the outside of boxes previously, but never as slip covers. We've got Hot Toys logo and all of the lettering down below done in silver foil and Valkyrie's symbol once more smack bang in the middle. I kinda dig this because it gives us a little bit of a sneak preview of what's underneath. Which is of course Valkyrie herself. Now most people who skipped on this release would probably tell you it's because of the movie or because of the outfit. I was personally waiting for the Ragnarok or the Endgame outfits because I see them as the more iconic looks for Valkyrie and Hot Toys have teased us with those multiple times already. I'm not complaining, I'm still happy we have a Valkyrie, it's just not my favourite look for her. What we are going to do now though, is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is done in the typical Hot Toys hexagonal style meaning it is quite low profile and it's got these flat edges, meaning it's going to be easy to work with. You can butt other hexagonal bases right up against this one. Up top, we've got this textured print with these blue clouds in the background, the Valkyrie symbol in the middle done in high gloss, and the Thor Love and Thunder movie logo. Then for the nameplate, they have used a different font than usual. I like the font, but I don't like that now this base isn't going to match all of the other Marvel bases already in my collection. So I'm kind of of two minds about the nameplate. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. This is definitely the most unique accessory here, it's Korg's face. Finally we have some kind of representation of him. I would still prefer a full Korg figure from Hot Toys, but this is a good start. I like the expression, he's doing the goat boat whistle with the squinting eyes and the open mouth that you can see directly through, and he's got the craggly rockwork for the skin with washers in the crevices to bring out all of the sculpted detail. The only thing that I don't love about this is the fact that the braided moustache is not removable. This is supposed to look like Valkyrie has tied him to the back of her head and these are her hair braids. So now you can't necessarily use this as some set dressing because then it would look like Korg's face has been ripped off the back of Valkyrie's head and her hair has come along with it. I love the way they painted Valkyrie's sword here with this subtle blue gradient right through the middle on this raised section on both sides, I reckon that looks awesome. Got washers in the detail, you also have washers for the hilt section, and they've painted it in more of an ivory colour. Plus you can see straight through the back part of the pommel. Now when you install the sword in the sheath, it unfortunately doesn't sit in there super securely. It's quite a loose fit, so if you do have this on her and you try to pose her and this gets tilted, the sword will probably fall out on you. The moment when Valkyrie pulls this out and Jane's like, oh yeah, grenade, right? Valkyrie's like, nah bro, it's a Bluetooth speaker. 
I couldn't stand that gag in the movie. And Hot Toys, they're just rubbing it in because they included the Bluetooth speaker. I mean, there is some metallic blue here and there and it's painted in this shiny metallic gunmetal. I will never have my Valkyrie displayed with this. Nor will I have her displayed holding these, it seems. Not because I don't want to, but because they're not practical. You'll see what I mean in just a second. We do get two of them, the blades are made of plastic and they are a little prickly, so do be careful not to spike yourself. The reason why we can't use these with Valkyrie is because her grip is too wide to hold onto these really skinny handles. The gripping hands are more so meant for either Zeus's thunderbolt or her sword rather than the daggers. You could maybe wedge them in there and rotate this piece, the cross guard, to lock them in position, but that just doesn't look natural to me. So I'll be going with the daggers in the holsters rather than in her hands. This, however, I will have her displayed with. It's Zeus's Thunderbolt, I already referenced it a moment ago. It is cast in translucent yellow plastic, so it's a really nice pop of colour on an otherwise very black and white outfit. The lightning can be removed if you don't want it there. There is some gradiented shading on the lightning pieces, where these little strands are brighter than the main body, where they're more of a saturated yellow. It is just made of that translucent, quite brittle plastic, so I would be careful with it, especially around the pointy edges, you wouldn't want to break anything. Now lastly, she comes with a full array of hands, ranging from closed fists, you have these buckles sculpted and painted around the back, and some contrasting glossy knuckles, plus they've even gone so far as to paint her fingernails. Same thing with the gripping hands, there is skin texture on the fingers because these are fingerless gloves. And lastly, we get some open palm hands already installed on her, right out of the box. What we are going to do now though, is get Valkyrie herself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, or accessories, or anything like that. Right off the bat, this figure is fine. It's okay. It's not perfect, and it certainly doesn't live up to my expectations because we have waited so freaking long for Hot Toys to give us a Valkyrie. Maybe my expectations were too high, and this is going to be your perfect iteration of the character. And as long as she works for you, that's all that matters. So the good stuff, proportions, I like the accessories, and the outfit is accurate. I had the pleasure of seeing the real screen used outfit at Acme in Melbourne, and this looks as close to being spot on as I've ever seen. But she has issues. Not nearly as many issues as the movie that she's based off, thank goodness, but issues nonetheless. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Valkyrie's head sculpt. Overall, I do think it's a good sculpt, but it's let down by the fact that she doesn't have moving eyes. And considering pretty much every modern day Hot Toys figure has them, I don't see it as anything but an insult to both the character of Valkyrie and collectors, because we've waited ages for Hot Toys to make Valkyrie, and they couldn't even be bothered to give us a head sculpt with moving eyes. Seeing as though they painted her eyes looking just straight on and they're quite wide open, she's got this real deer in the headlights look about her. It's not terrible and it doesn't ruin the head sculpt for me, it's just something to be aware of as it can make posing a little bit trickier. Everything else I'm on board with. There's a ton of detail for the skin texture, the hairline with the little baby hairs looks great, and there is so much texture in the individual strands of hair. Plus, they're made of this slightly softer rubbery material, so you can move these strands around. If you want to have them hanging down over this ugly seam at the shoulder which we're going to get to, that is absolutely an option. Speaking of options, you can have Korg's face on the back of Valkyrie's head sculpt. It kind of looks like her hair has been tied around the front of it to give him a moustache, and they've cleverly used the hair strands almost as clips to hold this in position. And there's a magnet up the top that does most of the heavy lifting. When you slide it on, the magnet's in her bun, it'll lock in place and sit there nice and securely. Front on, I don't think it looks great, because it sort of sticks out around the sides of the head sculpt, making it look even larger on the body. But from around the back, getting a much clearer view of Korg, this does look better. Although I don't think anyone is going to be displaying Valkyrie from behind rather than front on. For me, I'm going to detach Korg and have him displayed elsewhere. Oh, and the strands of hair around the back are insanely detailed. I know we've already discussed the texture, but it's worth mentioning just one more time while we're back here because there's so much of it to look at. We've even got some little silver bands here and there. 
The hair is done in clumps and it's layered, so it's pretty flexible, so I don't think it's going to get in the way when it comes to posing. Then we get to the cape. For once, it's surprisingly good. It's made of this lightweight fabric, so it drapes well, and it's done in this blue satin finish. So contrasting against the black and white for the rest of the outfit, it's a much needed pop of colour. They have added wires along the edges and in some of the stitched in pleated sections. So if you want to get dynamic with it, have it billowing off in the wind, you can totally do that. Underneath the cape, there is a lot of hidden detail on her outfit. It would have been cool if we could have removed the cape easily. I checked underneath this collar section and I think it's glued in there, so it doesn't come off as easily as I was hoping. Back around the front, we need to discuss this whole shoulder situation. Yes, it's unsightly. There's no two ways about it. There's a seam there and a step down at the shoulders. What exacerbates it is that the neck slash shoulder area piece is made of a completely different material as compared to the arms. So there is a skin tone and skin texture mismatch between these two elements. But doing it this way means that you can pose the arm forward or back without having to worry about stressing out any silicon or seamless material at the shoulders. So while it's not the prettiest thing in the world, it is functional. And you can use some of the hair strands to try and obscure it a little. No matter what you do, it's always going to be there. So it's something you either learn how to live with or you're going to pass on Valkyrie entirely. I would have preferred an all seamless body, but clearly Hot Toys see some kind of value in doing it this way, because they use the same setup for Hela, Wanda, and Shuri. At least the arms are made of that new softer style silicon they've been using recently. So when you bend them at the elbows, that's some very natural looking creasing. It actually looks and feels a lot like real human skin, which is a little bit creepy. And they've finally figured out how to print tattoos on the surface of silicon arms. The skin texture is baked into the material. It's not a superficial layer of paint over the top, so it shouldn't peel or flake off as you're posing her. I would still caution against leaving her arms bent for a long period of time though, because silicon does eventually crack if too much pressure is put on it. She does have these real metal armbands on the right side, and I would say be careful because there is a little split in them right there, and the last thing you'd want to do is put them on and move them around too much, causing that little piece to catch on the silicon and then subsequently tear up that material. Her chest armor is made of a rubbery plastic, meaning it is flexible, but it's sturdy enough that it's not going to deform, it's not going to lose its shape over time. You do have multiple different panels with this cross-hatching detail, Valkyrie's logo up on top, and for the white sections, they painted them in pearlescent white. So when the light hits the surface, they just pop, they gleam, and they just bring so much more visual interest to an outfit that pretty much is just white, black, and silver. We're not counting the cape, of course. So if they hadn't used the metallics they've gone with or the pearlescent paints, this could have come across quite boring. Her belt is free-floating, so you can adjust it up and down, move it around, pose depending. Whereas the skirt is made of screen-printed fabric. These panels that sit over the top of the skirt that are glued down to it do feel like they might separate if you put too much pressure on this piece. So another thing to watch out for. The straps coming down from these buckles on the belt do seem like they're made of pleather. And these studs are just glued onto the surface. These things fall off all the time. Fingers crossed, it just doesn't happen. The way you install the sword and sheath onto her harness is via this very visible, ugly little magnet just glued to the underside of one of these straps, which then causes the strap to bulge out over her thigh. Not only is it ugly, but it's just not very functional. When you pop this on there, it's super loose, and if you happen to bump it when you're trying to pose her, I promise you, it's going to go flying, and that is super frustrating. It just reeks of laziness to me. I think Hot Toys could have done way better than that. I would suggest dialing in the pose first and then installing the sword and sheath. Back to the outfit. So the pants aren't made of pleather. The harness might be. The pants feel like that rubbery style material. 
similar to what Hot Toys use for Spider-Man releases. And there are some stretchy panels on the inside of her thighs. You can make out this textured weave, kind of like an underlay, and there's some musculature poking through. Now, her boots are a split-cut boot design, which I like. There's some natural-looking wrinkling and creasing. And they are platform heels, with some tread on the underside. These little holsters are functional. You can slot her blades into them. Interestingly enough, it does say 2023 under her shoe, which means that Hot Toys were sitting on Valkyrie produced, ready to go for a while. I'm not sure how they decide when to release things, but I think if they could have had Valkyrie out sooner rather than later, they should have just ripped the band-aid off and released her. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Hot Toys King Valkyrie from Thor Love and Thunder, and on the right, the third-party version of Valkyrie from Avengers Endgame. I like them both, but if I did have to choose if I could only keep one of them, they both have pros and cons, but I would end up probably going with the Hot Toys one. I like her head sculpt better, I think the proportions are more realistic, and I dig her array of accessories. Whereas for the third party one, I like the rooted hair, I also like her head sculpt, but it's not quite as good as the Hot Toys one in my opinion. But I prefer her outfit, and she comes with a massive horse. Not to mention she's from Endgame, which is a vastly superior film as compared to Love and Thunder. Next up, I struggle to decide which Hot Toys Thor to go with for the sake of this comparison segment. So I just defaulted to my favourite one, which is the road-worn Thor from Thor Ragnarok. Considering the first time we ever met Valkyrie was in Thor Ragnarok, I think this comparison makes sense. Now in real life, Tessa Thompson is 5'4", versus Chris Hemsworth who is 6'3". So, factoring in her chonky, high-heeled boots, the scaling, to me, looks about right. Going over Valkyrie's articulation, because she's on a brand new body specific to her, I am curious to find out what's going on here. Starting off with her head sculpt, it's on a rubbery neck and a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, but the hair will get in the way because it's sculpted plastic. You also get swivel and pivot side to side. The arms are plugged into the shoulder sockets on ball joints, and then there's a hinge underneath this silicon cover. They will go up to there, going forward and back. There's a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Double bend at the elbow going way past 90, although it is covered in silicon, so do be careful. And that's where you get your swivel, down here at the elbow joint rather than higher up for the bicep. For the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. With the torso being covered in multiple hard plastic pieces of armour, it is more restricted, crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel, and pivot side to side. Her legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90, and a split cut boot design with a hinge and swivel for the ankles. I prefer a double ball peg because the way this is set up is essentially like a massive wrist peg. It can either go forward and back with rotation, or side to side for ankle tilt. You have to choose. You have to rotate the joint inside the boot, and then it'll go one way or the other. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is, because Valkyrie was announced at a bit of an awkward time for Hot Toys, back when they were still deciding whether or not it was worth the investment to give every figure moving eyes, she missed out on them. And what makes that even more frustrating is, if she had have had them, this whole dead-eyed stare situation she has going on wouldn't have been an issue, because we could have adjusted the eye position and solved for it. The second annoying thing is how you attach the sheath with the sword in it to Valkyrie's outfit. There's supposed to be a magnet in the sword, and there is, but it is so freaking weak, and it's way lower than it's supposed to be, at least on my copy. So when you're posing her, if this is on there, it's not going to be on there for long, because with the slightest touch, it goes flying. The third annoying thing is all of this stuff going on up here at the shoulders. Yes, plugging the silicon arms in separately to the body means that you can access that joint without stressing anything out, and I like that. But I don't think it was worth the trade-off when it comes to aesthetics. Having this massive gap at the shoulders, then the step down, and the body being made out of a completely different material with a different skin texture and skin tone to the arms, just makes everything look disjointed. 
I personally would have preferred an all seamless body, considering how long we waited for a Hot Toys Valkyrie. The first cool thing is Korg's face. Yes, there's a third party company that apparently is eventually going to give us a Korg. Right now, we can still represent him in the display by either popping this on the back of Valkyrie's head or having his face just sitting on the display base as some set dressing. And he's really easy to remove. He's held on with these little hair pieces that act like clips and a magnet. The second cool thing is they have finally figured out how to print tattoos on silicon bodies. For the longest time, they've struggled with this. That was the one thing that I think was holding them back from giving Harley Quinn a silicon body, for example. But now that they have cracked the code, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see more characters in the future with tattoos on silicon bodies. The third cool thing is surprisingly the cape. It's this lightweight two-ply satin blue fabric, so it's got this sheen to it, making it look visually interesting. The pleats are already stitched and baked in, and it's wired. So if you want to have it just draping there, it works. Or if you want to get dynamic with it, it'll do that too. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Valkyrie based off her appearance in Thor Love and Thunder. All the stuff about the movie aside, this is a bit of a bittersweet ending to this review because there are certain things I like about this release, but there are others that just leave me scratching my head, like the gaps at the shoulders, the fact that she doesn't have moving eyes, the use of pleather for the harness, and the magnet that fails constantly on her hip to hold her sheath in place. The biggest one, if I had to pick the most egregious out of that list, for me has to be the lack of moving eyes. They could have easily added them to this sculpt and it would have made a world of difference because the sculpt is solid. It's just the eye position and the way that they've been painted that lets it down. She looks like a stunned mullet, a deer in headlights and just not a good look. Hot toys always struggle when it comes to female head sculpts. They can solve this by doing moving eyes, they just decided not to because they literally could not be bothered. It just isn't good enough. They should hold themselves to a higher standard because we sure as shit do. And they know full well that most of the issues that this figure has, they could have solved. Fully seamless body, no problem, they've done it for other characters. Moving eyes, Padme was just released and she has moving eyes. The pleather harness thing, Crosshair had a real leather harness. So these things are solvable. Like I said, they literally just chose not to. Now, I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research. Make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.